Ah, oh, hell. I'm in the wrong game again. Hello, everyone. Nary Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. So, if you know me on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming at you to the Let's Play episode of Changeling Tale. So, last place we left off was right outside the Stag and Nanny. Let's uh, resume that, shall we? Hope you all are having a wonderful day. It's good to see you all. So, let's get right back into it, shall we? <clears throat> Let me uh, get into my accent mode. <clears throat> Alrighty. Cryptic as ever, and hardly a reassurance. I chide myself. What did I expect? Come on, girl. Let's get you back home. I won't make you join in this fool's errand. It's clear my mare thinks me the fool all right. This time, I wonder if she might be right. She's so pretty. Hazel's a pretty girl. I find myself back at the McLeod farm, now no longer searching for Jessie, but simply her silken red dress. The absurdity of it all has well and truly sunk in. But the Lana is the only lead I have now, a mad quest for a mad lady. I tell myself it would make for a good story once I catch back up with Jessie. She's probably sitting on the train now, maybe already in Glasgow. But surely she'd want, to, she'd want her red dress where she's going. I make my way to the front door, but stop myself from knocking. I can't very well tell the girls what I'm after. I need to be quiet about it. I slide around the edge of the house. Through a window I see Marion at the kitchen counter, drying the breakfast dishes. Grace is nowhere in sight. Watching for a few minutes that seemed like an eternity, I finally see Marion brush off her hands and head out of the house. She walks, carrying two milk pails off to the pasture. My patience and motivation for this errand are wearing thin. Now is as good a chance as I'll get. Let's uh, save it right there, shall we? Uh, yeah, that actually sounds pretty good. Yep, oh, okay, I guess that won. <laughs> I guess that worked. There's just enough space to squeeze through. Jesse's lingering scent, lavender, musk, and spicy honey wafts through the window, sweet and strong. That makes me want to sniff a candle. I start to wriggle through the open window, cursing myself for getting myself into this sticky situation. About halfway in, the window begins to slip, and I feel it bear down on my waist as I try to twist my way inside to no avail. Aw, oh, shit, I guess I made it. I messed up. I messed up! Great. Here I'll be found, wedged in a window like some vagabond, or rather like the clumsy fool I've become. My legs are plumbed to the sky as I summon all my upper body strength for one more pull. The window relinquishes its grip and I tumble into a heap beside Jesse's bed. Miraculously, no one seems to have heard or seen the commotion. I get up and collect myself. There is the dress, puddled on the floor like a bloodstain, just where it fell last night. A night that now seems like ages ago. Grabbing it, I carefully slip out the way I came in. A clean getaway. That wasn't so bad. But now what do I do with this dress? Silken folds drip between my fingers. It's light as air and feels cool to the touch. I chuckle to myself. Maybe the wolf will catch the scent and come back. Then I'll kiss it on the nose and she'll turn into my beautiful princess. Just like one of my grand's fairy tales. My levity quickly fades. This was no fairy tale. Gran must be wondering where I am. I begin to make my way across the field towards home. Malcolm, is that you? Huh, <sighs> busted. Grace, I was just... You know, if you need to get Jesse some clean clothes, they ought to be a bit more practical. She pulls a wool sweater and skirt out from behind her back. I mean, it's a lovely dress, but maybe a bit much for daytime, eh? My blush extends from ear to ear. Thank you, Grace. I appreciate it. Jessie will, too. Malcolm, she's a grand lass. Be good with her. I assure you, I will. And send her home for supper. We miss her when she disappears for the night. That I can do. I guess the cat's out of the bag now. I only hope I can make good on that promise. I walk home, relieved, red-faced, and with arms full of Jessie's wardrobe. Gran has been worried, but she knows better than to ask too many questions when I return home. I'm thankful. It saves me the trouble of having to sort out what to tell her. 
I put Jesse's clothes into a satchel and, again, it sinks in just how lost I am. I could try to go find Alana, but her whereabouts are as much a mystery to me as Jesse's. Not knowing what more I can do for now, I set myself back to work on the farm. The routine helps. Today even begins to resemble a normal day. It's peaceful outside, belying that anything is amiss. The sun lazily ducks in and out of the cloud cover as it makes its way across the sky. Hmm, pretty. Pretty, pretty, pretty. It has just slipped below the horizon when I hear Gran ring the dinner bell, beckoning me to return from the fields. Hmm. With our bellies full of sweet bread and potatoes, we rest our bones in front of the fire while Gran recounts her visit to the church this morning. Marion had taken her, and I feel a pang of guilt for not being there to do so myself. That said, the sermon is one I believe I would have been lost on me. Gran describes the pastor's depiction of, vic of a victorious crusade, and the blessed boys who returned home in one piece. It sounds very poignant. In some fashion it was, but none other than the men who serve know the meaning of war, and loss, and what survival and strength truly mean. She breathes deeply and offers a smile that only thinly disguises the concern beneath. She senses that the tumult of recent years has impacted me greatly. If only she knew the ups and downs with which it had been punctuated. These last few days, heroes welcome, an evening of bliss. Now Jesse missing amid Ray and made Rad's rumors of mystic wolves. Assuming in confusion, and it must show, but I can't bear to see her fretting over troubles not her own. Gran, the strength of a soldier is matched entirely by your own strength. I assure you, don't worry about me. I'm readjusting well enough. I'm happy to be home. Even as I say it, I don't know if I believe it, but I want to. Gran gives me a sly grin. If you're to miss church again, Malcolm, please leave me a note on your pillow, lest I worry, or lest your name be added to the Whist Club's next round of gossip. Honestly, I thought she was about to sneak under the table for a moment. She's taking the escalator down. She winks, and I assured her that a task that is a task for which I can comply. Satisfied, Gran gets up to tackle the dishes left dirty by her meal. I stopped to consider if Gran's gossip circle might have more shock over her grandson spending the night with a woman, or finding out that woman might now have a tale. Which reminds me, you'll never believe what nonsense had the ladies in a fuss today. What has it? A wolf is on the loose. Can you believe it? Oh, I just might. It's possible I've heard stranger. Aye, and you know I'm not the one to discount stranger things. But the wolf, Agnes, that old codger, he has quite the imagination. Just you wait. Next week it'll be an elephant. I better keep I better keep a close eye on the flock then. Lest they get trampled underfoot. That is, if the wolf doesn't get them first. We share a good laugh. Which is abruptly interrupted by a knock at the door. Expected company, dear. Finally, the relief must show on my face. Yes. <clears throat> Just wrapping up some business from in town today. Shan't be long. I shoulder the satchel of clothes to give to Alana and pray this wild goose chase ends with Jesse home safe and sound. I'm gonna guess that's not Alana at the door. It's probably Bulgare. Yep! <laughs> yep! This is not Alana. As Bogetter steps into the lamplight, I see, I see he looks even more over the top than usual. He's every bit the big game hunter. Malcolm, my boy, and a fine evening to you. Ready to go save the town? The morning's conversation feels ages ago. I am caught totally off guard. Ah, I am not sure. It may be too late to save the town from itself. He guffaws. Ah, you're right, lad. It's probably beyond help. A cool breeze drifts through the door. The temperature has already dropped quite a bit. Care to come in for some tea? Coffee? Grand's voice hollers from the kitchen. How's well, Malcolm? Before I can respond, he hollers back. It's Bogare, ma'am. Come to whisk your grandson away on a grand adventure. He lowers his voice again. And there, Mr. Campbell. Thank you for the offer, but I won't be bothering your grand so late. Goodness, sir. 
I'm afraid there are no elephants to bag around here, and our sheep would make terrible trophy rugs. Miss Campbell! Ha, ah, my trophy hunting nowadays are over. We're here to take care of the wolf. Ah, the wolf. Grand lets out a chuckle. Oh, Gara, dear, there's not been wolves about since the days of Bonnie Prince Charlie. Everybody's saying that. Perhaps. After tonight, we'll know for sure. He slings a rifle off his back and hands it to me. It feels cold and familiar in my hands. Bad memories fight their way back to the surface. I do my best to suppress them, trying to think of something, anything else. My mind drifts to Jessie. I can't shoot this wolf if there's any chance it is her. But the more stretch in every direction, despite the Bulgarian's confidence, I can imagine we would have better luck finding a needle in a haystack. Ready, lad? Ready as I'll ever be. Agnes puts a frail hand on my shoulder. Her eyes linger on the gun, and she gives me a sad, thoughtful look. I suspect she knows more than she lets on. Be careful, Malcolm. I will. I give Gran a hug, throw on a jacket to ward off the elements, and venture off into the fields with Bulgar. Hell, man, don't you shoot your woman! Well, that might do it. A lone sheep stands pitifully before us. Oh dear. Tethered to the stump, it bemoans being separated from its flock in the warm comfort of the sheepfold. At least, that's what I imagine the bleed to mean. After we had marched up and down three pastures to no avail, Bulgar decided on a change of tactics. Bait, he had said, was sure to bring the beast out in the open. I don't share his certainty, but my legs are thankful for the respite. We sit behind a rock taking turns watching the poor animal. I've no idea how much time has gone by when Bulgar breaks the silence. Who are you holding up, soldier? I'm cold, exasperated, and desperately craving a drink. I definitely took in too much whiskey last night. Caused more than a headache today. Bogart nods thoughtfully. Aye, I've been there. After I got home from battle, I had a much greater thirst for the drink myself. You've returned recently? Nay. It's been all nigh twenty years since I was shipped out. Can't you tell from my grey hairs? What then? The colonial wars. Aye, three years of tra of traipsing across the savannah on the heels of the bloody Bora commandos. I nod solemnly, and he seems to sympathize. They didn't tell you how, we, how when you signed up, did they? The burden, it never goes away. Are you sleeping at night, eating when you should? I wasn't expecting this conversation. Not in the middle of the night, in an open field with an aging, pub with an aging publican. But I realize that of all the people in this town, he may be the only one who really understands. I try, in the way I wake in the nights, cold sweats, memories. It's best to try and forget, push it all aside. Try not to make sense of it, lad. Take it from me, you'll never find the answers. You just won't. Pretend it never happened. Unless you're one of the blissful ignorance, it's your best. No, your only option. Easier said than done. Forget everything. Be the officer in charge of your own life now, Malcolm. Take hold of everything you can control and drive it full speed ahead. Even if that means getting a good night's sleep, or drinking a good pint, or walking outside in the rain. Any day without gunfire ringing in your ears is a blessed day above ground, I say. I nod, wishing I would better appreciate the sentiment. We fall back into silence. The rest can remain unsaid. Trenches, whistles, mud, fear, loss, rejoicing, coming home, making love, losing focus, pleasure and pain, another day above ground, another day above ground. The sheep, resigned to a night under the stars, finally lays down and closes its eyes. You suppose when a sheep falls asleep, it counts people? <laughs> it's all I can do to take my mind off things. Bogart laughs and looks sorry for me. Out here, lad. There would not be enough people to count. Why don't you have yourself a rest, Mr. Campbell? No sense in both of us suffering. <laughs> no sense indeed. 
Or we could both go home to the comfort of our own beds. Heh. <laughs> Empty-handed. Angus will never let me live it down, especially after we borrowed his sheep. It's alright. Go home if you like. I'll hold the fort. For a moment I consider taking him up on his offer, but I worry what will happen if Bulgar encounters the wolf without me. I can't leave a comrade behind. That's the spirit, lad. Now, get some sleep. I thank Bulgar and prop myself up against the rock. It's not the most comfortable conditions, but I'd slip through worse. Nope. Alrighty. We are on the hunt for Jesse. That concludes it right there for now. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.